Welcome everyone to part six, yes, six of the Grazer Mower Revival. In the last episode, we got the last of the spindle assemblies ready, so now we got all three of those done. And we also got this new output pulley on the gearbox, so that's all done. Now, because I'm still waiting on a starter, and I haven't finished the test fire, so that video's not done yet, but I'm you know, still waiting on a starter for the mower to see if it's even going to run. But while I'm waiting, I might as well get the deck ready. So that's what this video is going to be about. Uh, first thing, as you can see, I already started some yesterday, painting. And I've kind of gone over this a little bit in the last video, but I'm just using whatever paint I have. It's a mix of brands and types. I don't know if any of it's any good or how good it is, if it's good at all. Uh, and I certainly do not care all that much because it was free and I'm not buying paint to put on this thing. So I got the inside mostly done. It needs a little bit more here and there, mainly around the edges. The paint is just supposed to help stop it from rusting more. You know, I'm not looking to make this thing, you know, nice because, well, it's, it's already not nice. It's dirty enough, but as you can see, I need to get the front here and then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to put what I can on the underside so nothing exciting is going to happen there uh, when it's done and dry we'll come back and see about getting some spindle assemblies and other stuff in paint looks better on camera doesn't it um anywhere well okay so like right there it looks like it's thin and is it nah not thin enough to worry about uh you might notice there are two different colors of gray that is, uh, that is real. That's not a trick of the camera. So let's get the deck flipped around and see what it looks like there. Well, I have my work cut out for me. Let's get to work. I'm using this. Duplicolor acrylic enamel, just if anybody cares. Oh, my knees. I'm gambling heavily. This isn't going to blow back in the camera's face. all she wrote. All right, I can explain. It's actually very, very simple. I ran out of gray paint. See, I started doing this with gray, and then I ran out, and I thought I had more, and I didn't. Uh, and so I got to looking, and most of what I had was white, gloss white, white primer, and so I thought, well, who gives a crap? It's just to prevent rust, so the underside of the deck is getting painted white now. Uh, ugh, excuse me. That, damn, actually, what, I don't know what that was, but that was actually a, a good gray color. Damn, that actually looks pretty similar to the original. Let's uh, fish around here in the trash can. I'm sure I got it. Is it this dupli color? Medium gray. Yeah, I'll be tickled. Freaking duplicolor. That's pretty damn close to Grazer Gray. I mean, it's far from perfect, but it doesn't look half bad. If you went with a darker one, maybe. I mean, yeah, look. Yes, I know there's holes in the deck right there, but it's just this middle piece that rusted out. The rest of it's perfectly fine. Because, I mean, if you look at the underside over here... I mean, it's, yeah, this was bad. That hole is supposed to be there, by the way. Yeah, this is pretty bad through here in this particular area, but the rest of the deck is actually not in too bad a shape. You guys got to remember, this thing sat for like 13 years or better. 
Am I out? I don't, I don't know that it was quite that long, but it was at least 10 years. It sat for at least 10 years, probably more. I My memory's a little fuzzy on that. I was a little... It was about that high when this mower was parked. So, uh, yeah, first coat's on. That's just going to dry. A lot of people probably yell at me because, oh, you're not supposed to paint when it's humid outside. Well, I don't really care because this is not for aesthetics, okay? It's probably going to get worn off in the first cutting anyway. But um, I had to open the door. No matter where I stood or kneeled to paint, the wind just kept blowing it back in my face, even with the door closed. It was really kind of irritating me. So, um, yeah, this will just have to sit for a couple hours, and then I'll move it somewhere a little more convenient. The top side... This doesn't look too bad. I'm happy with it. Um, like I said, all this is supposed to do is, is prevent rust. It's supposed to stop it from rusting more. And that's how I view paint on most things. It's supposed to stop it from deteriorating as quickly. This may not last, but I had the paint, so... And uh, if we come over here to the paint box, I mean, I got all kinds of stuff left in here still. Let's see, that's white, that's white, that's white, that's also white. Uh, this is, this is actually yellow, okay. So that's yellow. This is, this is gold. That's gold line paint, that's gold, that's, I have to look at the labels. Rusty metal primer, and this is high heat. This is black. Yeah. See, when you get stuff for free, for some reason, people don't always put the right caps back on the right cans. So I thought I had more gray paint than I did, uh, but I did not. So that's okay. What I had worked really well. I don't know if you can even get grays or gray anymore. But what's left in this can of this stuff, this stuff is actually pretty nice. I like it. This spray enamel, that's nice. But I got enough left in here. This was damn near a full can. Uh, I can hit this again, do a little touch-up, get a little more. If we take a look under here, I got that pretty good. You know, uh, that's one of the things I do like about these grazers. They, they got a lot of steel in them. You know, they, this is not a light deck. That's pretty solid still, so I'm not worried about that. I just wish it hadn't sat for so damn long before I was able to get to it, but, you know, that's all right. So, this has to cure and sit, and then, after I get the final paint on, we'll get this done, and we'll get some other stuff on, and make it look nice. Okay, so we are waiting on the grazer to recharge. I'm still trying to do a test fire so I can finish the test fire video, so... In the meantime, we'll go back to the deck. And as you can see, probably better on this end, I have all of these spindle housings in. And there's, I mean, there's nothing exciting about that. Uh, the only note really is decide which way you want your grease zerts to point. In this case, I want them to point the front of the deck. That way, when I lift the deck up, it kind of sits at an angle like so when it's on the mower. So this should make it the easiest for me to get to with the grease gun because it's it's going to get quite a get a, it's going to get quite a bit of grease in the first few hours of operation and I considered packing them with grease when I put them together. You can if you want, but I don't I don't see any need to. I'm just going to pump them full of grease and just keep doing that every once in a while. So, a uh, quick note about the fasteners, which is 27, 28 and 29 here in the reference for this uh, 7 sixteenths by, let me find it here, 7 sixteenths by 14 by inch and a quarter. I don't remember if we actually ended up with those, or if we got like inch and a half, but I put a flat washer on the bolt in addition to the lock washer and just a regular nut. And they do not specify Loctite on any of that, but on this bolt right here, for the spindle pulley, 21, they do specify Loctite. And again, I, or maybe I didn't mention it, but I, I don't like Loctite because in my experience, I have problems getting things to come apart. So I'm not going to use Loctite. You can use that if you want, but they only 
you know, request essentially that you put it on this bolt here that holds the pulley to the spindle shaft. On these that hold the spindle housings to the deck, they don't specify anything. So with all that being said, uh, and all of the spindle housings in, the only thing which I'll just show on one because there's no need to show all three, we just have to get this in and get that on and tight and then everything should be good. Okay, let's, let's actually, let's scooch you guys over here so my arm's not in the way. Let's, uh, let's put one of these spindles all the way together. So we'll start with the spindle shaft with one heavy washer on the bottom. Get it shoved through. Next, we will take our second heavy washer, put it on there. Then we will take our key, which I did cut a little bit short, but that's all right. And then we'll take our pulley and get it started. Come on now. There we go. Get all that started. And then finally, we'll take our second or our little heavy washer here with the bolt on it and get that put in. Tighten it down. There, that's pulling everything together nice. Okay, when that's done, we will verify that it spins. Seems okay. And we'll go ahead and tighten down that set screw. Okay. There we go. That should be fine. Ah, now that looks much better we're getting there it looks a little more complete now looks better here uh, i'm not going to be putting the blades on just yet and i am reusing the old blades by the way so i don't have a cross number but anyway now that that's done next step is to get these idlers in there's one here and one here plus this tension arm, the spring, and all that stuff goes on next. Then the gearbox. All right, well, I just got done with a successful test fire and test run on the mower. So we're back to the deck and we're getting down to the tricky part, which is getting these idler pulleys in, getting the gearbox in, and getting the belt routed. So, well, let's go over here to our fancy diagram. Uh, spindle pulleys are all in. So you have two idlers, and then this is the gearbox output pulley. The idlers I chose to use are that number right down there, that 532 number. And I don't have my, I forgot to bring my cheat sheet with me, but the dimensions for the old pulley will be in the description down below. But this is what the old pulley looked like. We'll go ahead and rob the new one here and put them side by side. And you can see there's there's quite a bit of difference. This is a lot more uh, protruding on the new one compared to the old one, but it should it should just work. So I think the way I have to put it down, this will go against the deck. This part will stick up, and that should bring everything into uh, alignment pretty well. So down here on the tension arm. I, there's a, there's a stepped portion on the tension arm and there is just, just enough clearance between the tension arm and the bottom of the pulley. And yeah, there's a little bit of deflection in it, even though it's new, it's, it happens, but they say use a, I think an inch and three quarter bolt on the old pulley, but I had to use almost a two inch bolt on this plus one lock washer and I don't think it's going to clear the deck cover panel. It might it might rub a little bit and I may have to modify it a bit. But uh that's all in. There's nothing fancy about any of this. It's pretty straightforward. I'm going to put that other idler in and that belt will come down then like so. That idler will take up that space. When we get the gearbox in, that's when we'll get everything over that last tensioner. We'll go over the belt routing once everything's on there and I can show you. So, yes, right here we have a 
3 8 by 16 by 1 inch bolt, sorry, that holds the arm to the deck. And then right over here at number 33, we have a 3 8 by 16 by inch and a quarter, but I had to use inch and a half to two inch with new pulley. And then over here, they say you need to use a 3 8 by 16 by two and a quarter on the second pulley. So I've got plenty of those laying around. It should be fine. Now, important thing to note, the pulley that goes on the tension arm here, this is threaded. This little piece that sticks up, that is threaded. So you don't have to worry about a nut. But on this other one, you have to have a nut. And then there's also supposed to be a spacer. And I believe I have that spacer. It's a little rusty, but I've got it. And I'll use it. And if I didn't have it, I would just take up the slack with, um, with washers. You don't need... The spacer is not an insert. It doesn't take up slack in the bore. That's something they like to do on this grazer is use um, inserts to take up slack, but I don't, excuse me, sorry, let me get my thoughts clear here. You don't need the spacer for this. You just need the spacer to get the right height on everything so you can use that bolt, but I don't know why you couldn't use a shorter bolt. So all that is, that's how all that goes on. The gearbox, of course, just mounts right to the deck. It's its own plate. And I am going to chase the threads on all the mounting points that are left. And I'm going to go get the other uh, panels that cover the deck. I'll put those on when everything's done and I know it all works. I need to see how it spins before I go putting panels on it. But I'm going to get the rest of this thrown on here. We'll get everything tight. And we'll see how it looks then. I'll show you how the belt's routed and how I got it on and all that stuff. You guys ready? Ta-da! Look at that. Deck is all together. There are a few small problems that I ran into, but we'll go over that. Don't worry. For now, the big thing I want to show you is that this whole thing turns by hand, even though it doesn't want to. The belt's a little stiff. I'm reusing the old belt because it's not like cracked or anything, but it did get kind of a shape to it after sitting for so long but right like this i can turn it one-handed it's got a little bit of resistance on it not bad i think as it runs and it gets a little warm and loosens back up it'll be okay so i didn't really have much trouble getting this together and as you can see the belt routing is this we'll go over that in just a second but i didn't have much trouble getting everything together um, I had to modify the tension arm where it pivots. I had to raise it up because right there, as you can probably see, that is one of the plates that had to be welded in to beef up the deck. So I had to raise this tension arm up so it would clear this. And when I did that <clears throat> to where it would move back and forth, I realized the first spring I had on here, which was a number 58 extension, it was not having it. That spring, which I... Hang on, let me... Where is it at? It's right here. Number 58 extension spring is... It, it's not even extended, and it's too long. And even if it was short enough, it doesn't have the right spring rate. It's not springy enough. It can't pull on that tensioner enough to keep stuff tight. So, I went to Orschlem. And I bought a number 175. Where's that bag? I wrote it on the bag so the cashier didn't have to work all that hard. And she looked it up in the book anyway. But I think it was a 175 or 178. Damn it, why can't I find anything ever? Well, whatever. The point is, that's what's on there now. And it it's a lot shorter. It's only about three and a half, four inches long. But it does not have enough spring rate. Got to figure out where I'm pointing here. And so, even extended quite a bit, it just it doesn't have enough pull on it to keep everything tight. And the belt does not need to be ridiculously tight like a serpentine belt on a car, but it's got to have it's got to have more tension on it than that because I can, I mean, I can move it, figure out the right direction here. I can move it with just like a couple fingers. It doesn't take much to 
detention the damn thing though I have to push it down a little bit slide it underneath there and yeah I, I can do that one-handed so it doesn't have enough tension on it because the original spring and the book does not give a number a spring number it just gives a part number and it just says spring tension but this is extended out all the way because it sat for so long and as you can see it's bent and I don't know about you, but a spring that bends and does not bend back is probably not a good spring anymore. So, tomorrow, it's Memorial Day, but Orchland's open, thankfully. So, I'll run back in tomorrow, and I'll get a heavier spring. The Ingersoll, Case Ingersoll website, I go there and look at parts sometimes to make sure I got the right idea of what it's supposed to look like. Sometimes I got some additional information about it that's helpful. But the spring that they list is only about three, maybe four inches long total. And it's a lot heavier. It's, well, it's like that, if that was compressed all the way. So I'll have to get a heavier spring. Orson sells something similar enough, I think I can make it work. Because if I can, I'll get the belt off, I shove it all the way over, I hook everything up while it's kind of loose, then I get the my ratchet, because I don't have a breaker bar, and pull it back, slide everything on, and that should keep everything nice and tight. Because if I run it like it sits, I'm just going to slip the belt constantly. So that it does need to be tighter, uh, or more tight, whatever you want to say. So I, I had to make those modifications, not the end of the world. Another slight modification I will have to make is because I had to put this on this way, I'll have to raise up this last trim panel. I'll have to put some just washers, essentially, like three or four and I'll raise the panel up so I can bolt it down. It'll stay solid, but it won't interfere with that. It'll look a little goofy. It won't be flush with everything else when I get it all on, but that's okay. I, I do want it on there. I don't want stuff just falling right into the deck, especially when I'm trying to run it. So I think, uh, I think that should work pretty good. Now, the belt routing is pretty simple. It comes... <clears throat> well, we'll start up top from that pulley. As you see, it comes around. It comes clear around, okay? Then it goes around the gearbox output pulley, back around the idler on the tensioner arm, over to that spindle pulley, and then up, and then, yeah, it goes essentially like that around that other idler so that it takes up uh, all the slack it's supposed to. It's not difficult. The book points it out. This is the right side. This is the left side. This is the tensioner right here. So that's what it looks like with the belt and everything routed. It's, it's not too bad. And then, what else? Oh, yeah, I haven't put the blades on yet. And they just say to use a 3 8 by 16 by 1 inch bolt with a lock nut. But I'm not going to use lock nuts because I hate them. And the blades are sitting out there. They're rusty, but I should be able to mow with them okay. I have not found a cross-reference for them yet. I've been looking, but they're really specific because the problem is the... I'll just grab one here. So the problem is you got the center hole, right? That's not a big deal. But the distance between both holes is like three and a quarter inches and that's what's making it difficult for me to find replacement blades uh, these blades should be okay i mean they're rusty yeah but a few turns and they'll clean right up uh, you know i mow enough dirt it'll make them shiny and stuff and they'll last for a season i think they'll do pretty good uh good enough to see if the mower's gonna work so i don't have any blade part numbers yet but that's more of a it's more of a deck installation type of deal, isn't it? So, yeah, I don't have the blades on yet. The belt went over that. And what else? That's, I mean, that's pretty much it for deck assembly. I mean, I get that other spring on there. I'll let you know what I end up with, the number and stuff. But that'll be in the next video because after, let's see, by this point, if you've been watching in order, you will have seen the test fire video. It's a cluster, but... You'll have seen it, and then you'll probably have also watched the spindle and gearbox rebuild video. 
And then you'll watch this, which is the deck assembly. So then after this, it's essentially just final touches, deck assembly, and I'm going to go test it. And then I'll, you know, after I run it for a week or so, and I know how it's going to do, I will do a essentially review of the whole thing and go over kind of how much money we put into it and stuff like that. So, yeah, because I, I got a whole bunch of little stuff to do. Like I got to put the fenders on, I got to put the weights on, blades... I'll put the shields on once I know everything in here is going to move like it should. And uh, then I'll just mow with it and see what it does. And this mower certainly has its work cut out for it. Yeah, it's going to mow all this and, and a lot more. So it's going to be working. But anyway, that's all next video. This video, I'm going to end it here. Because then I can go put it all together tonight and have it ready to come out after the other stuff comes out, uh, the, the other videos. So, I appreciate you guys watching. I know that these, these last few have been kind of all over the place. I've been trying to film three separate videos across the past week, and it's just been a hodgepodge all over the place. And, yeah, so I, I appreciate you listening and sticking around and toughing it out, because I know it's a mess, and I'm screwing up words and phrases and things like that. So... Anything I forgot to mention, anything I need to clarify, all the part numbers and dimensions for those idler pulleys, all of that will be in the description down below. Because that's what the description's for, is to say all the things I forgot to say in the video, but was too lazy to edit them in. So uh, check that out if you need extra links and extra information. Otherwise, I'm done for today. I will get the rest of the stuff uploaded. You guys can watch it if you want, and we'll be done with this project before too long. I'd like to get out and mow. That'd be really nice. So, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Alright, well, I ran out of gray. This is the last of it. This is aluminum. So, I don't know how that's going to look. Probably silly. If it'll show up at all, that is. Oh, yeah. Oh, too fancy. <clears throat> ah! <coughs> Smells bad. Oh, my gosh. All I have left is aluminum... And then I also have white. But this aluminum stuff is actually kind of nice. That's shiny. That's too good for the underside of the deck. So I got a ton of white paint, so we'll just use white. <laughs>